Yeah. 
evening, the father, Igor, was assaulted as he was returning home from somewhere in a drunken state. I assume, just my assumption, that he probably began to attack someone else but didn't realize his intoxication level. So this caused him to fall and hit his head on a curb. Due to this incident, he got a disability pension because of chronic migraines afterwards. Money. So you can imagine how bad the conditions were for $22. 
and they were very reclusive and pretty isolated from everyone else. Vlad's father did not play a role at all after the divorce, and the relationship was pretty much non-existent at this point. He did, however, have a good relationship with his grandparents, and often visited them at the other apartment building. After Vlad's parents divorced, Vlad's mother, Galina, joined the Jehovah's Witness. And this group is not very popular in Eastern Europe. And in fact, since Crimea became Russia in 2014, it's been banned to be a Jehovah's Witness in Russia. Many acquaintances and neighbors started to speculate that Vlad was neglected because his mother was so preoccupied in his religion at this point and she stopped paying attention to her son. Also, she would not allow Vlad to take part in some school activities because of the religion. Although Vlad did attend services with his mother, he openly mocked the religion whenever he was accompanied by his friends. He appeared to feel some sort of responsibility towards his single mother and ensured to dedicate his time to her. In high school, Vlad was considered to be very attractive by many girls and a lot of girls actually had a crush on him. Vlad was said to be academically challenged and did not do good in school. He was described to be very isolated and spent a lot of time alone. He was either seen at the library reading books or on the computer center using the computer at school since he didn't have his own computer at home. It was around this time that Vlad developed interest in punk rock music. This is when we began to dress differently and started to spike up his hair, which his mother, obviously because of religion, did not approve of that. However, Vlad did not care what his mother thinks and continued to be rebellious. One of Vlad's teachers suggested to his mother to buy Vlad a computer because he spent most of his time at the computer center in school in an attempt to maybe steer Vlad in a different, better direction. She did end up buying him a computer. However, the computer did not change his behavior at all. And in fact, it seemed to deepen his interest in violent video games. And now he would constantly research serial killers and different school massacres that happened. He even discussed these events on his social media accounts. One of his social media accounts even had a profile picture of none other than the serial killer Anatoly Adnabryenka, who I have a video of. That's just one very infamous, crazy Ukrainian serial killer. On his Steam account, he had a profile picture of a mass murderer, who was also a neo-Nazi and a white supremacist, Dylan Roof. Additionally, Vlad would join different forums about serial killers and would constantly post discussions there. In one post he wrote, There are a couple of million people like me in social network alone, and I will tell you why. I have practically no empathy. I think I'm half psychopath. Also, I'm surrounded by idiots, and I could shoot them all. But it is bad to kill people. I just voiced my opinion. I do not call for killing. At the same time, Vlad was searching how to make homemade explosives, and his interest in firearms steadily grew over time. Vlad was so interested to gain more knowledge about all this that he went as far as to contact military men online and in person to interview them. After graduating high school in 2015, Vladislav Raslikov began 
still lived with his mom and the college was farther out in the city. He had to take a bus for 41 miles to get to college every day. The students that took the bus with him tried to stay away from him as there was one time that he was on a bus and he opened his backpack and there was a bayonet from a machine gun inside this backpack. I'm not sure where he was able to get this being so young especially. Usually it's really hard to find any firearms or any weapons in general in Russia, Ukraine or any other Eastern European country unless you go to the black market that is and there's a lot of them there. So at this point Vlad did not have any friends in college and he was pretty much a social isolate. He even distanced himself from the girls that tried to go out with him because as I said before there was girls that had crushes on him and he didn't care about them. However he did date one girl, his ex-girlfriend that he dated up until the attack and she said that he spoke a lot about losing faith in people due to ridicule for being different. She said that he would constantly mention about the conflicts that he had with others and she also noted that he expressed a desire not to live anymore. Vlad usually never talked to his classmates. However, when he did converse with others, it would usually be about violence or something horrendous. He was particularly interested in a Columbine massacre that happened in Littleton, Colorado in 1999. He was very intrigued and interested in Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, who were the perpetrators of the Columbine shooting. This led many people to speculate that Vlad was influenced by them. Moreover, at this time, his behavior began to take a dark turn. In college, one day he apparently sprayed a pepper spray into one of the classrooms. Before he sprayed the pepper spray, he told some of the classmates that he wanted to seek revenge on the evil teachers. By the way, this is with the topic, but have you guys ever been sprayed with pepper spray? Accidentally or not? I have. I actually have a kind of funny story about that. One day I parked at my college campus parking lot. I was going to class and I had one of those pepper spray keychains attached to my keys. And you have to twist the top to open it. And so somehow the top got twisted and some of the pepper spray leaked out as I parked the car. And I took out the keys and I touched the pepper spray that leaked out with my hands and I think I touched my eyes with that too. And oh my goodness, I could not see or breathe for the next two hours. I missed all my classes that day and I actually had a test before so I was kind of in a hurry and I was trying to park and run to that class to take the test and I couldn't take the test. So I was kind of disappointed because I was studying for that test and it was just a disaster. That day I had to sit in the car for hours to be able to even drive home. Crazy story but now I know how awful pepper spray makes you feel. So imagine that's how the people when he sprayed the pepper spray in the classroom they couldn't breathe for probably for a long time and opened their eyes. Vlad also mentioned to his classmates that he wants to gun down everyone. So he was literally telling everyone about his plans and nobody stopped him. Unfortunately because nobody took him seriously. Because Crimea is now part of Russia, they have really strict gun control measures. Vlad Raslikov successfully secured a firearms license on September 18th of 2018. In order to get a firearms license in Russia, you have to undergo a mental health screening and a firearms training. Vlad Raslikov also went to a private shooting school and got a certificate there as well. I think you need that to get your firearms license as well. So with the new acquired firearms license, what did he do? He went and purchased 8 shot 12 gauge pump action shotgun complete with a pistol grip in October of 2018. In order to pay for these weapons, because remember Vlad wasn't working, he went and stole some money from his grandparents. And he paid $640 for these weapons. That's a lot of money for, especially for Crimea for at that time too. It's crazy. In the days leading to the tragic event, Vlad bought an additional 150 rounds of ammunition and right away began his target practice in a secluded forest. In the days immediately 
himself and ended his own life as well. Possibly this scene was also influenced by the Columbine massacre, since the library is where they killed the most people and also ended their own lives there. It was reported by witnesses that the attack lasted about 15 minutes with 70 people injured. 10 of those 70 people were in critical conditions and 5 of them were even in comas. 20 people were unfortunately killed in this horrendous massacre. So out of those 20 people, it was 15 students and 5 teachers. It took about 20 minutes for the authorities to arrive on scene. And at this point, Vlad had already killed himself. About 200 people of the Russian security force came on scene. Because of the bomb, they thought it was a terrorist attack. The Russian health minister said that the students who were killed had their organs pretty much ripped out because it was a shotgun. So, exploded everything. And there were metal balls in kidneys, intestines, and other organs. And that is how powerful the shotgun was. The crazy part is that Vlad's mother, Kalina, since she was a nursing assistant, she was actively involved in assisting with injured at the hospital, unaware that her son was actually the perpetrator. She was actually very concerned about his well-being and anxiously awaiting any news about him. And... When she found out that her son, her only son, did this, it shattered her world. And she was also apprehended by the police right away. And she was taken to custody for questioning because she's his mom. It was evident that Vlad was heavily influenced by the Columbine shooting because even the clothes that he wore on the day of the attack was very similar to Eric Harris from Columbine shooting. It was white top and black trousers, and he also wore black gloves, just like Eric Harris did. The bomb went off in the cafeteria first, just like in the Columbine shootings, and also he ended his life in the library, just like Columbine shootings. It is very chilling that he was so fixated on this horrendous massacre that he decided to replicate the entire event. My thoughts go to everybody who lost their lives on that tragic day.